because there's a big hole right there. Yep. You want me to try and pull forwards? What's going on, gang? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are at another private water fishing lake. This is going to be absolutely insane. Check this spot out. It is our first time seeing this property. It's in Sherman, Texas, just north of McKinney. The place looks beautiful. Tons of submerged timber, lots of grass, crystal clear, at least today. And they are upgrading the ramp here this month, if I'm not mistaken, so you'll be able to launch some full-size boats. But at the moment, it is just what they might call an improved ramp, right? So we're gonna see if we can launch the boat in here today. That's what we brought, so we're kind of in trouble if we can't. The kayaks are chilling at home. We got the hot tamale head of storage, so we're gonna try and make this thing work. The Tundra is four by four, and would you look at this right here. I'm thinking after eyeballing the setup, going through on these rocks seems a little sketchy, but right here, obviously, they've tried to back in the trailer. The grass is pretty much up to the surface, but at the same time, there's a little bit of depth right there. So we'll just back her on in, get right on the trolling motor, and then we'll just hope we can pull it out later. But what a beautiful property. Devin and I cannot wait to get to fishing. So we're gonna line this puppy up, back it in, get the boat in the water, tell you a little bit more about this thing as we fish it, and hopefully just tear them up today, you guys. And today's episode is sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box, guys. Y'all can try your first box for as low as $10 with code Weston. Link is in the description as well, in case you forget about it. But you can measure catches and win prizes from MTB every single month. Months. We have a bunch of different baits in here. Top water. We've got some shaky heads, cranks, creature baits, craws. This is going to be a fantastic time out on the water. Thank you to Mystery Tackle Box for taking care of us on today's episode and allowing us to do fun things like this for you guys. We were actually going to bring the kayaks today, but we don't have any electronics on them. So that is why we wanted to bring out the hot tamale, pull out the live scope, check the temps, and just see what we're dealing with here. There's a, like we said, there is a lot of submerged uh, vegetation and timber, so maybe we can key in on some of those fish and have a better chance at reeling in a hog, just kind of knowing what we're dealing with, checking depths, things of that nature. So let's go ahead and get launched. It looked like they head back to trailer up right here. Probably a little John boat. Boat's a little heavier. I was just kind of having my doubts on how the truck's gonna pull away from here with all this loose gravel, as opposed to these big rocks. There's a lot of loose gravel up there. Should be fine though. See, uh, see where it cracked. Uh, I Our motor you. support kind of cracked from. It's like about a year old, I guess. I guess you probably just got to get a new one. These pads have given out. Trims kind of had to get pushed further, and so now. Our motor tends to tilt just a little bit when we drive instead of staying straight because of that. So we got to get another one of these at Academy or something, probably 50, 70 bucks. Plug it up. Don't want to forget that or we'll be pulling it out twice today and that might be more of a challenge. Power on. Sweet. Nice and slow. Yep, you got it. Yep. Go ahead. All right, let's see. Nice and slow. Yep, you got it. Yep. Is it not good? Ugh. Oh yeah, it's a little low. Well, that didn't work. Well, nothing but traffic ahead, y'all. We just dropped off the boat at storage. We're headed to go grab the kayaks and hopefully make it back with a couple hours to fish. It's been a mishap of unfortunate events in the yeah, past couple yeah. of days. Yeah, the past couple videos have definitely been, we bottomed out the boat today. We, we checked the hole, it looked like there wasn't any damage. So, you know, next time we get out, if it sinks, you'll know. But I think we're in the clear for the moment. Maybe the trailer got dinged up a little bit, but that, you know, that's the trailer. So I'm pretty excited about how the second half of the day may go. So stay tuned. Okay, back at home. Got the motors loaded up. We also have got the kayaks ready to roll. I gotta grab a couple more things. All right, y'all, so we are here back and we are amped. Jared just hit us up from Austin over FaceTime. He caught what he's pretty sure is a double digit on the K9, absolutely crazy. He's putting it on the scale as we speak and we're getting ready to launch. I think something to do with the moon phase and the fact of like the timing in our area with the spawn leads me to believe some bigs might hit the kayaks today. So we're absolutely pumped. These are our favorite kayaks, by the way. If you guys want to check these things out, motorized kayaks with spot lock. I would almost rather fish off this in 15 mile an hour winds than the boat anyways, just because this is how sketchy it can get launching and loading up. These things just like keep you pinned right on the juice. So small and versatile can get you through the small waters like this very easily. We were psyched about the electronics, but I don't think it's going to be necessary here. The water's so clear. I think we're going to be drawing them in. So we're setting everything up, getting the batteries put in here. Check this out Devin just modified our boxes while I was gone this was not today but she put these extra three rod holders on here so we can have one two three four five six seven eight plus there's two rod holders up here so really like eight rods plus the one you're using that's I know that's so overkill but for you like serious kayak anglers 
there's no better way to go than having everything tied on. You don't want to be re-rigging on the kayaks. And so we've got a major setup here. We got the MTB box out back. We're ready to go, y'all. Let's hit it. See the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Okay. Most of the day is wasted, but we still have time to throw the box, man. A sketchy boat ramp cannot stop us. I think the boat is in good shape. Just tipping the boat a little bit. Fire this thing up. This is your remote for the kayak. You guys haven't seen us use these in a while, I don't think. Motor not found. Yeah, that's fine. It says motor not found until you drop it in. So we'll just go ahead and start paddling out. Devin's already out there. There we go. There we go. Skirting. First one for me in the boat. Not going to show the release on this guy because this is gonna make this into, you know, a double digit growing fishery. Uh, we are instructed to cull all of the fish under 14 inches. So they aren't having to compete with all of these little junior sized bass that are just munching up all of the food all the time. Dude, look at all this grass. This is thick. I'm gonna spot lock off this point. Throw this perfect little bluegill imitation in here. Forget about it. This should kick it. Hmm. Well, I was pretty sure that was a fish. Wow, what the f is wrong with this hook? Two casts in a row. Is it bluegill that's eating this thing or what? Ay, ay, ay. There we go. There we go. All right. Missed one in that same spot, munched it. Solid fish, too. That's a two and a half to three right there. Sick. Wow, first cast with the saucy swimmer over here. These front facing rod holders are ideal for when you're de-hooking fish, re-rigging, holding bass, anything like that to keep your rods on the kayak. All right, let's get them back in the water, y'all. What a catch. Is out here. Woo, hitting the flip. Might be able to bring something different to the surface if I throw this. Got a first cast, mag draft. First cast. <laughs> okay, that was unexpected. First cast on the mag draft. I thought I had like grass, but then I saw the line swimming and then I saw the bait going everywhere towards the surface of the water. He got side hooked, but he went after it. Gee whiz. That's an eight inch mag draft, by the way, you guys. Holy smokes. I think I'm gonna keep throwing this for a second. I think there's some big bait fish in here. So this is probably a regular meal for a lot of these bass. They see that kick and tail. This is a bait that I was throwing for a handful of days before getting my first catch and then you get lucky with a hot bite sometimes or you just get in front of the right fish's face and it's game over. Oh, bass. Oh wow, that was crazy. Had a follower. Oh, oh god, god, little guy. <laughs> this is ridiculous. That eight inch size, just a huge kick and tail. I mean, this thing will bring the fish in from a ways away. Let's see what we've got in this pro box, man. I'm thinking, yep. I'm thinking shaky head with a plasma tail. It's a little calm over here. I might let this thing drop down nice and slow. This thing's about to get smacked. My only concern is the weight on this is a quarter ounce and I might get into that grass pretty quick, but I think it'll be okay. Shaky head is on. Look at this worm, dude. What a good color. Just with a little chartreuse tail to bring them in. And then that nice green pumpkin color to really seal the deal. Twist it on that shaky head. There's a couple different ways to do it. I am just gonna, for now, poke it through and go almost all the way through the plastic, but I'm gonna leave it to where I'll be completely weedless. Oh my gosh, that thing's gonna look so good in the water and you just smack that hook set. I'm using a muscle rod here, 7.5 heavy extra fast, and these things are getting in the yak. Trust me, oh my, oh wow. Yep, I'm gonna flail this thing around like a bit. Let's do it. And what I'm gonna do is target the shallows, y'all, right on the grass edge. Even the same spots I've been hitting, but just with something a little bit different. I was working those other baits a little higher in the water column. This is gonna sink down there. Get in the grass, got a bite. Oh, wow. Had a bite and it could have been a good fish. It literally snapped off a freshly tied Palomar knot. That does not happen. Good news, we know what they want. Should I just tie it to the straight braid? It's literally the color of the grass. Let's just do that. I know how much some of y'all like your leader line, but Nah, I don't want a chance of losing this last one I have in the box because I can literally throw the worms on here I can throw the uh, creature baits that came in here or maybe they're more like crawl style But regardless if I lose this shaky head, I'm kind of in trouble 
This is 50 pound braid. I'm gonna feel those hits with absolutely zero slack. Not like I had too much of a leader there anyways. I will rip them through the thickest grass with straight braid, forget about it. Let's go. There's a fish. There's a fish. Oh, he's a little dude, he's a little one. At this specific location, you're supposed to remove all bass under 14 inches as well to keep the population strong, so we are gonna get him out of here. Ooh, there went one on the crankbait, okay. Nice. All right. Oh, in the boat. Oh, should have said it. Oh, he still has it. Oh, he choked it. <laughs> he was like swimming with it. A little bit better size on the white citizen. No way. Yeah, there we go. Big baits. Only after uh, about five hours of trying to fish, you're big enough to keep in the water. Bye, bud. I'm gonna try and get one on this western crankbait right here. Resembles a little bit of a sunfish. This could be good. Front facing rod holders on the old towns for the win. A lot of times a lipless crankbait is good when you're working through grass like this because you can kind of rip that grass off of there. But with this square bill, with those crankbaits that have a, a lip there, this is a shallow diver. You'll notice the nose on this one, not the nose, but the bill is much larger. This is a deeper diver. Probably hangs out around nine feet. And this one's gonna dive probably two to five feet. And so working it through grass is not as ideal because it kind of gets caught on the bill there and you can't rip it off as easily as a lipless crankbait. But this is what is in this month's box and there is a great place to use it and it's along the edge of the grass line. So I'm gonna try not to get in the grass, but work just around it, right where these bass are ambushing little fish that might be swimming out from the grass itself where they're kind of in the cover hiding. We're looking for a reaction strike. We're just working past these fish really quickly with these crankbaits. We're covering water, a great way to hone in on those fish and then maybe follow up with something like that shaky head so you can find the fish quickly with this guy and then you can really tear them up if they're not on a dedicated crankbait bite with something like that worm I'm throwing that on the Guggen squad reaction rod with some lighter fluorocarbon I believe this is 12 pound which is how you're gonna get the maximum depth out of your crankbaits they're rated to the 12 pound line anything thicker or heavier and the line doesn't cut through the water is good it's a little bit more dense and it's gonna be harder to cut down to the diving depths these crankbaits are rated for so this is 12 pound reaction rod so it's got some forgiveness in the tip up here. It's got that slower tip and that's gonna help you with those treble hook baits. You wanna keep those fish pinned, but you gotta work them a little bit slower. You gotta kind of play with them. When you're talking about trebles, they're smaller hooks than when you're using like a single hook on one of those big soft plastic baits. So there's a chance of bending them out. And, and that's another reason why you want that slow tip rod. If you're using something that's extra fast and just nothing but power, like a 7.6 heavy extra fast, you can rip those treble hooks right out and it's gonna be tough to bring them to the boat. Look at that, it's got my name on it. I like to keep my rod out of 45 when I'm fishing those cranks. You can really feel the wiggle in the rod tip and you're already kind of like prepared for it to load up if those fish hit, as opposed to like holding it straight on. That's not gonna be as good. They'll pull against the drag and there won't be any forgiveness. It's just gonna be a straight pull. So again, they could rip those treble hooks out. You want that rod to have a little bit of give when they first hit. Cause even though it's a shallow diver, I am picking up a little bit. Oh, wow. He hit it right by the boat, but we missed him. Okay, what happens is you get a little bit of grass on your treble hooks and stuff. You just drop it down real quick, just past the reel and you can hold the bill in your hand that you have the rod in and you can pick that grass off there real quick and get back to casting. <laughs> Look at this. Sounds like Devin's on. What's it? This guy was jumping out of the water. There we go. Got one. See, so I'm just kind of playing them out. You're just letting that rod work in your favor. I threw crankbaits for a long time on like seven, six rods, real heavy and uh, people would criticize me for it. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying there is a perfect system for the crankbaits. Get you a cranking rod, something like the Guggen Squad Reaction, and you're gonna be set to catch those fish. This guy is a little small, so he's gonna get taken out of here. There we go, there's one, there's one. We are clearing this place out of the little guys. Good news, y'all, they like the Weston baits. That is what I love about Mystery Tackle Box, man. Try stuff that I haven't ever thrown before and build some confidence in it and then start catching some bigs on it. Speaking of, it looks like Devin is on again. All right, I'm gonna have to put this down, man, but y'all, if you wanna grab your first Mystery Tackle Box for 10 bucks, link's in the description. Oh, there we go. This is what I'm talking about. This is what we're looking for. This is the exact reason why we're clearing out those little guys. 
is to give us a better opportunity to catch a good fish like this. This is my best one so far of the day, so I'm gonna go ahead and put them on the scale and see what we're working with. I would say probably about two and a half or so. Healthy though, chunky. Right about where I was thinking. It just held at two pounds, nine ounces. One more lick of that guy. All right. Bye, bud. So Devin says she's catching them on a white swim jig, which is another bait we have in this month's box. So I think it's getting tied on. Do you have any white saucy swimmers or no? Okay. Look at this, we have a white jig in here. Does it say swim jig? It does say swim jig. So this guy's gonna be a little bit different than like a standard casting jig. I know it was one of the things I learned after a long time. It's like, what's the difference in all these jigs, these casting jigs? And usually those swim jigs have a little bit more of a pointed head because they're gonna be cutting through some grass and things of that nature. This is a perfect spot to fish it. You wanna be fishing through the grass and the thing is on the move. So typically the weed guard is gonna be lighter duty. This is like a little, I don't know if this plastic is the right, I guess it's like a, a type of plastic so that when those fish hit it on the move, you can go ahead and get that hook penetration, but it's gonna help prevent getting grass on the hook itself. Now, when you're using most casting jigs, this is a much thicker, like almost wire. And that's to prevent you from getting snagged on some stuff like tree stumps, cover on the bottom that's much thicker. And so you've got usually a reinforced one, like I say, on those casting jigs. Pointed head versus almost just like a round or flattened head along with that weed guard is two of the main differences. But of course the hook is gonna be a little bit different as well. I would say something like a little bit of a lighter wire hook. These fish are gonna be eating it on the go as opposed to maybe a thicker hook with some of those bigger heavy duty jigs where you need to slam those hook sets so this thing looks pretty quality shad and chartreuse exactly what Devin's throwing and it's got your plastic keeper right there I got to go grab a white saucy swimmer to toss on as a trailer just a small like 3.3 inch swim bait and this thing is getting hit I usually like to line it up because those hook lengths and sizes are different on a lot of jigs so I need to see exactly where I'm gonna come out of that plastic so that it's not scrunched or stretched or anything like that so I'm gonna just slide it right on down to right about where I think I need it come out of the plastic slide it on up it's locking right there boom locked on tight and a perfect fit holy smokes okay that's the swim jig of the century right there in the mtb box y'all let's get this thing in the water now typically with swim jigs i don't necessarily just crank it like a, a chatterbait what i like to do is a little bit of this right here i like to kind of pop consistently i like to pop that rod consistently up and so what's happening is you're almost like popping that skirt and it's almost looking like that jig is swimming like this here. And I don't know why, but the action seems to do really well. So as I'm constantly popping, I'm also constantly reeling a little bit. You kind of like hit a pop and it's really heavy. You're like, oh, fish on. So that's how I'm gonna be working it. If I was really in the thick grass, then this popping that I'm doing, she, see, she's catching fish and I'm not. But this popping that I'm doing almost becomes more valuable as you're working through the thick grass versus just fishing open water. If you're fishing open water, I don't think this technique that I'm talking about matters too much. And also this is a, uh, a setup that you might fish on straight braid, almost like we had on that last shaky head setup. So when you're working through this thick grass, if we were to get like a five pounder, six, seven, anything, right? A big fish, they're gonna take you down in that stuff and that braid can just rip right through it. We got 50 pound braid on that other setup. So straight braid to swim jigs is oftentimes a perfect pairing. Cause if you're fishing open water, you're probably gonna be fishing the bladed jig. You might be fishing the swim baits, etc. The swim jig has its purpose and it's for fishing that heavy, thick grass. Oh, got him. Oh no, we had our first hits on it. Okay, there we go. Popping reel, popping reel. <laughs> oh, caught him. <laughs> Told you the technique worked. <laughs> oh my God. Little fish. Oh, he's gone. Do you have it? Yeah, you do. You're not bad. Saw a, a swirl, cast it right in there. This guy picked it up. Not a bad little tyke. Y'all, we are actually close to completing a slam for the first time in a while on the channel. We have these craws and we have the blooper topwater and it's getting to be topwater time. That blooper might get the biggest fish too. Y'all are gonna have to stay tuned. Trench hog, we love you, but you got to go, my friend. We are trying to get a slam here. Texas rig, this bad boy. Oh my goodness, forget about it. We already know they like that green pumpkin color in here based on the worm. Oh my gosh, this could be this could be a giant waiting to happen. Oh, there's one. Yes! Oh, 
Oh no! Dang it! Oh, he grabbed it on the run. He grabbed it on the run, Devin. No way, I was bringing it up to the boat. That's actually a good one. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> I was swimming it up to the boat because I was about done with the cast and he came up for it. Yo, that's one on the crawl. That We are so close to completing the slam. Okay, and he clears 14 inches. Peace. Before I break out the top water, I wonder if I might stumble on a giant right here. All right, we're gonna go for it, y'all. Last bait in the box, it's a top water. And we're gonna throw it on the light finesse rod because it has treble hooks. So, should be all right. But here's the main reason, because this is the only rod on my kayak now that has braids. So <laughs> I'm gonna cut off this short leader, tie on that popper. It is a true challenge getting a slam done. Sometimes it takes the whole month until you get your next box to really catch one on everything inside of it. But I wanna show you guys tips, tricks, and techniques in today's video. Since a slam is really only a once a month thing, you don't see it that often. So let's break out the Guggen Squad blooper. Poppin' top water bait, y'all, with the trebles. This could just secure the bag right here. I would not be shocked if a big hits this thing. Top waters do bring out the giants. It's just, they don't hit top water every morning and every evening. Sunrise and sunset, perfect time to throw them. But you can always make it happen on the top water. The thing is, I'm seeing some little fish blow up near the grass edge. So I'm starting to think now's the time to tie it on. Oh, look at this black and green color. So sick. Like in this property too, to have a great night out fishing on the kayaks and be able to catch stuff on all kinds of different baits, just really gain confidence. Major shout out to Private Water Fishing for adding Flying J to their list of properties. I mean, I am digging the spot. Tons of grass, perfect habitat. You got trees, you got it all, man. You got those reeds along the edges. Shoot, you even got some cactus over there. Good spot, good fish. We got that thing tied on, let's go. So again, same scenario as the crankbait, this lighter finesse rod, right? is gonna help me when I do hook up. Cause when I do hook up those light little treble hooks, right? You gotta play them out. So you don't want a super stiff rod like you might think for most top water baits, like a frog, things of that nature, where you need that strong hook set. With these right here, they're gonna get pinned on those little hooks pretty easily. Oh my, dude, this is gonna get hit so fast. I gotta tighten my drag a little bit, don't I? This could be like the sickest fight. As Soon as I hit that grass edge, it was deceiving because it looks like the grass edge is further, but that grass almost to the surface comes out an extra five to 15 feet, depending on what area of this bank we're hitting. Right on the edge of where that grass is just subsurface is probably where I expect to hit. All right, we're gonna cast one this way, then we're just gonna work it down the bank and hope to secure the bag on the last bait in the box. Last little bit of open water. Oh, slam complete, slam complete, flying J, flying J. <laughs> yeah, it's not even a bass. We got a little bluegill, <laughs> sucker. We're breaking out the pliers on this one and calling it a night. Look at that, we were on our way back. We weren't getting any hits and a nice one. See, look, this is what the bass are munching on in here. He's got some spines too, watch yourself. Those bass are munching on stuff like this. No wonder they're hitting the swim baits. Top water to finish the night. That's what I'm talking about. MTB slam. Woo! All right, y'all. Slam is done. We're loading up. Probably the first completed slam in months, man. Wintertime was tough to us on those slams. But uh, anyways, we got an 845 movie to make. Luckily, this property is close to us. And shout out to Flying J in Sherman, Texas, man. Amazing property with private water fishing. If you guys are interested in this service for yourself, you can actually save 50 bucks off initiation with code Weston when you check out to become a private water fishing club member where you can fish a lake all to yourself for the entire day the place is completely yours it's totally private Devin and i had access to this thing fish any little spot we want to don't worry about other boaters trying to beat us to the punch and hit the good spots the juice is all ours and we would love to thank mystery tackle box for sponsoring today's video without them we wouldn't be able to do this and film some awesome stuff for you guys let us know where you would like to see the next mystery tackle box slam and we'll see you on that video peace <gasps>